What's the difference between the Grand Canyon National Park and Grand Canyon West? That's what I'm gonna cover in this video. First, let's start with the location. These two parts of the National Park are really not that close from each other. Grand Canyon West is much closer if you're coming from Las Vegas. It's like a day trip from Vegas. You can spend two and a half hours driving and get to Grand Canyon West. Uh, the Grand Canyon South Rim is much closer to Flagstaff and Phoenix and Arizona. By the way, I'm gonna use these terms South Rim and North Rim. The North Rim of the National Park is a much more remote section. It's closed for the winter, but if you're looking to do like lots of big backpacking and stuff, uh, you can go there. Even though they're like just roughly 10 miles across the canyon from each other, it's also a four hour drive to get from one rim to the other rim. Most visitors visit the South Rim because it's open all the year. It has the most attractions, it has the most hotels, it has the most food. The North Rim uh, closed during the winter. There is a lodge over there, but for the rest of this video, I'm just gonna be talking about the Grand Canyon National Park South Rim and the Grand Canyon West. All right, now let's talk about the price. The admission fee to these two Grand Canyons very different. Why? Well, because the Grand Canyon National Park is operated by the National Park Service, a division of the U.S. federal government, and so admission fees are relatively cheap. $35 for a car full of people for an entire week. Seven days admission for $35. You can also get an annual pass to the Grand Canyon and all national parks for $80. The Grand Canyon West, on the other hand, is operated by the Hualapai Native American tribe. The Grand Canyon West is their primary income source, and so the admission fees are significantly higher. They also don't get any tax money to help offset the running of it. So general admission to Grand Canyon West is about $50. It's like a sliding scale. It's more some days, it's less some days. Uh, and then if you wanna go on the Skywalk, it's $25. So a general person going to the Grand Canyon West goes in and does the Skywalk. So you can expect $75 per person at the Skywalk at Grand Canyon West, not per car. And that admission is just for one day. All right, let's talk about getting around these two parts of the Grand Canyon. Uh, we'll start with the Grand Canyon West. There is one main parking lot at the Grand Canyon West where then you go into a tent, you go through the tent, and you board a shuttle bus. The shuttle will take you to one of two stops. You'll either go to the stop where the Skywalk is, or you'll go to the Guano Point stop, which has the little hike of the Guano mining operation. The Hualapai um, area that has like the Native American town, that one is a separate place you gotta drive your car to. The shuttle doesn't go there, but I found the shuttles at Grand Canyon West. I found the lines to be really long, and I found them a bit of a haze to take them, but a very simple shuttle system because there's only two stops. And no, you can't actually drive your car to the Skywalk or to Guano Point. You do have to park in that main parking lot and then shuttle it around. The National Park also offers a shuttle system. It is a much more extensive shuttle system because the National Park is so much bigger. They have multiple different routes. They run seasonally. For example, right now I'm hiking the Hermit's Rest Trail uh, in the summer, spring and fall. You have to take a shuttle bus to get out here the red line. But if you're here in the winter, which is what I am now, December, January, February, then you can drive out here and you don't need to take the shuttle. So there's a lot more things that you'll be driving around in the national park, but the shuttles are useful as well. You can even take the shuttles into the park from Tuyasan, if I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but the neighboring town in Arizona, that's kind of like the gateway town into the national park. In the summertime, they also offer shuttles from there. So people staying in those hotels don't even have to drive their car into the park. You can also ride a bike around the National Park. There are bicycle rentals or you can bring your own bike. And honestly, in the summer, that's a pretty good way to get around because when they close off the roads and there's just shuttles operating on it, then uh, you don't have to deal with a whole bunch of other cars or traffic with them and your bike. Okay, let's talk about things to do in these two canyons. Let's start with Grand Canyon West on this one. The major attraction at Grand Canyon West is the Skywalk. This is the glass bridge that extends over the Grand Canyon. It is amazing, it is a sight to behold, it is a sight to walk on. It also is a lot, like I waited in line for an hour to walk on the Skywalk. Definitely one of those like once in a lifetime bucket list items, assuming you are not afraid of heights, but that is the primary attraction at the Grand Canyon West. Now, in addition to the Skywalk, there are a few more things you can do. There's a zip line you can take. There's a few short hikes you can go on. There are three or four different restaurants that you can eat at. There are some Native American displays that you can look at to appreciate Native American culture. Of course, there's gift shops. There's a little Native American historic town where you can do a shooting gallery. 
And if you're even more adventuresome, you can even go on a whitewater rafting expedition of the Colorado River, although you don't take that from the same part of the Grand Canyon West that you do the Skywalk. That's about two hours away in Peach Springs, which is also Hualapai Nation property. All right, so what about the Grand Canyon National Park? What is there to do here? Well, what there definitely isn't is the Skywalk. So that's a point that sometimes people confuse. If you wanna go on the Skywalk, definitely go to Grand Canyon West. But the Grand Canyon National Park is a much more outdoorsy place. So if you like hikes, if you like camping, if you just like being in nature, the Grand Canyon National Park is where you'll want to be. The Grand Canyon National Park is also where you can take the famous mule ride from the top of the canyon all the way down to the bottom. You do have to sign up for about 15 months in advance if you wanna do that, and then you can either camp at the bottom of the canyon or you can camp out at Phantom Ranch, which is kind of like a real rustic lodge down there at the bottom of the canyon. This looks like a little bench here, doesn't it? I think I'll sit down for this one. All right, which one has better food, the National Park or Grand Canyon West? National Park, hands down. In particular, at the El Tovar main dining room. This place is amazing. It is a grand dining room. I actually had Christmas dinner at the El Tovar. I had an amazing, delicious lobster bisque, a really good prime rib with real mashed potatoes, asparagus, topped with a red velvet cake. This was a great Christmas meal, not just a great one in a national park, but like legitimately great food. Also great breakfast. You get like pancakes and eggs and bacon. There's a whole bunch of other eateries at the national park and sure, some of them are pretty mediocre like sandwiches and hot dogs, but compare that to the Grand Canyon West where the food options are very minimal. There is the main sit down restaurant, which is above the skywalk. There's a little trailer out in front of that that serves like American food, like chicken tenders, uh, at Guano Point, uh, with the bat mining operation when I was there, it was under construction, so they didn't have any hot food. What I ended up eating was at the Native American restaurant at Hualapai Point. It was actually a really good Native American taco served on fry bread, um, but uh, I, was, I was looking around for a while to try to find good food there, where at the National Park, my belly uh, has been pretty full. And by the way, I can remember these vividly because I was at Grand Canyon West yesterday and I'm at the National Park today, so right one after another. So this is all fresh right up here. Now, what about the hotel or lodging options? At the Grand Canyon West, you have a couple options if you want to stay on property. They have some rustic cabins that you can stay in. They start at about $200 a night. They also have some pretty expensive RV parking for about $20 a night. Uh, and that's, that's pretty much what you got there at Grand Canyon West. There's like no other neighboring hotels within a long way. There's like the nearest town is like an hour away. So uh, pretty much if you wanna stay at Grand Canyon West, it's those two options, the cabins or the RV parking. The National Park, on the other hand, has a ton of hotels uh, from Rustic Cabins, where I stayed in last night, the Bright Angel Cabins. There's these little cute cabins that are also about $200 uh, to the very fancy El Tovar Hotel, the original lodge that was built here that is very quite grand to a whole bunch of things in the middle. And there's a neighboring town just a few miles outside of the gate, so you get the standard chains that are out there if you want to stay even further away, like an hour away, you can even stay down in Flagstaff. So you're gonna find a lot better hotels in the Grand Canyon National Park if you wanna stay here. Uh, and so how long, if you wanna to go to one of these, how long should you spend at each one? Well, Grand Canyon West, I'd say is really, like it's a day trip from Vegas. That's what I think it is. And so you'll spend day trip time there, something like four to six hours, depending upon whether you eat, whether you hike, but that's about it. Uh, the Grand Canyon National Park, you can spend days here. Uh, I ran into some hikers coming up and they've spent three days here. One day going down, one day camping at the bottom, and one day coming up. Uh, and so the Grand Canyon National Park definitely has a lot more to see and do. And I think it's the place that you'll come to and even want to come back again. Now the question is, which one should you go to? Should you go to Grand Canyon West or should you come to the National Park? And I think that depends on really two main things. Uh, the first thing depends on where you're coming from. Uh, if you're coming from Vegas, Grand Canyon West is really close. It's a day trip. You don't need to stay anywhere. It's easy. Couple hour drive, spend the day there, go back. You can look into the Grand Canyon. You can see the really cool Eagle Rock formation. I forgot to mention this earlier, but there really is this nifty like eagle in the rock that you can see it on my video, but it's also cooler to see it in person. Um, so that's why you go to the Grand Canyon West. Also, if you don't really like to be in nature, but you want to see it from afar just to kind of admire it, 
Grand Canyon West is for you. If you want to be in nature, if you want to commune with nature, if you want to camp, if you want a rugged hiking expedition, but even if you don't want any of those, if you just want to stay in a nice hotel and you want to eat nice food and you want to walk along the rim trail, there's this 14 mile paved trail that runs along the rim. You don't have to do any hiking to the bottom or the top. You can see kind of the theme park version of the national park from there too. Uh, but I think the Grand Canyon National Park is worth a longer visit. Uh, there are many people who only come here for a couple hours, and I think if you're doing that, you're not getting the full experience. I'd recommend if you're coming to the Grand Canyon National Park that you spend a few days here. All right, well now that you know the difference between the two, if you've decided on one to go to, you can find my National Park Guide right here or my Grand Canyon West Guide right here. You'll also find links in the description below. As usual, I won't say goodbye because I'll see you in one of those videos.